to the ocean. Yeah, let's go outside. We can hang out on the beach without freezing. Yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas times, we'll be chilling and having a good, good time. Is coming to visit. No, he wouldn't miss this in Christmas times. Oh, 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 and the sun said it is just getting better on a blanket with the skyline painted in blue. Ooh, yeah, that's what we do. We'll be chilling and having a good, good time. Hi, crafty friends! Welcome back to Crafty Vlogmas Day 29. Oh my goodness! I'm your host, Mommy Lala, and today we are diving into an extraordinary project, an art inspired by the masters, guided by none other than the artistic visionary himself, Coach Adam Tinka. In our session today, Coach Adam suggested that we will actually make a copy of the masterwork versus just be inspired, which is far easier and rewarding for us all, don't you think so? And isn't that awesome? Yes, so uh, Coach Adam has shared with us a template to make it easier for us to join him and learn to or study the masters how they do it. The link is actually in the description of this live stream, so go ahead and download it now and use it to create along with us today. Prepare to immerse yourself in the world of art as Coach Adam Tinkup shares his expertise in creating masterful pieces inspired by the great artists. So whether you're a seasoned artist or just starting on your creative journey, this project promises to spark your imagination and add a touch of artistic flair to your crafty endeavors. Coach Adam is not just an artist, he is also a coach. A life coach, as I may say so myself, he actually has started Mindset Mondays over on his Facebook and YouTube channel. His passion for helping others unlock their creative potential and more, you know, and more shine really, okay, uh, it shines through this platform. So for today, join us as he shares his insights knowledge and love for art inspired by the masters so whether you're picking up a paintbrush for the first time or you're a seasoned pro today's project promises to be a journey of artistic discovery all right so let's unleash our creativity and make something truly extraordinary together and with that let's all welcome back on mommy guide inc's vlogmas day 29 coach adam hi coach Hey there, everyone. How are you? Oh, what an honor it is to be here. What a great introduction. I need to hire you as my PR agent. I sound so wonderful. You are wonderful. Artistic visionary. Yeah, I like and that. You are, yeah. right? You are really, right? So one thing that I really love about, you know, um, Adam is he, you know, sometimes I, I see things as it is right as is where it is but you know so oftentimes adam would like to see more than we, we actually you know see he go he sees something beyond it so i said oh 
he's actually a visionary of some sort. Not just with the art, but also with you know content <laughs> creation and so many other things. Okay, Coach Adam. Okay, so first, Coach Adam has been with us several times over. He's a favorite guest here in the channel, right? So, oh, but you're too kind. Yeah, but before we continue on, let's just say hi to the people in the chat, Coach. Okay, so of course, we have my moderator daughter coming in. Good evening. Good morning. Cordelia, hello. Thank you so much for coming in, my coming in, my friend. Yes, and he, she is also saying hi to you, Adam. Cordelia is an amazing crafter, Adam. Okay, part of our crafting community. And we have Melissa. Hi, Melissa. Thanks for dropping by and saying hi to Cordelia. And we also have Pam. Hi, Pam. Okay, and everybody saying hi to everybody. Of course, the community is awesome that way. He is still Alaska supporting his mom. Okay, oh, missed that one. Oh, how how is your husband doing? Oh, okay. So I hope he's doing well, Melissa. Okay, and there, um, he is doing good. Okay, I know that's very difficult for all of you. Sending hugs. Yeah, sending hugs as well. To you, Melissa, and the rest of the family. And, uh, okay, I'm not good at things outside the box. Same here, Cordelia. I'm like, what I see is what I get, right? But Coach Adam is different, right? So, and he is going to share, you know, some of uh, tips of how we can actually become somebody like him a little bit, right? Okay, so Coach Adam, first and foremost, maybe people would want to know, what uh how did you actually start into you know loving art and doing art because you've been doing it so all I, your life it's right? a good question it's a good question i can help with that so um i i grew up in new york in new york i was born in in queens in new york city and grew up just outside of queens and, and long island but i spent a lot of time in my youth and in my young adulthood uh going to the great museums in new york and in fact when I got out of college, I worked as a an assistant and then a studio manager for some of the top mega stars in Soho in New York in the 80s, which was mm -hmm. considered some of the highest period of modern of, of postmodern art in, in New York. I was right in the middle of that scene. I've had the opportunity to meet some really amazing uh, icons and legends like Andy Warhol. I've uh, met wow. uh, Jean-Michel Basquet. I've met Keith Haring. Uh, and I worked for Marsha Gigli King, who is a, a great, who was a great painter. Uh, out, out, she was she was from Texas, from Houston, Texas, but she uh, had her studio in Soho, and I worked. I managed her studio along with David Leach, who is a, a very amazing photographer, uh, art photographer. So I spent a couple of years when I got out of college, uh, living in that whole scene and getting to know that you know the, how it all works. And I sp I've spent I've spent hundreds, if not thousands, of hours at the Met and the Museum of Modern Art. And then when I finally got a real job, I my the the office that I worked for in fourteen for fourteen years was directly across the street from the Museum of Modern Art. And the company that I worked for, we actually did the accounting for the museum. So we were able to go there for free. And I have spent almost every lunch at the Museum of Modern Art studying the pictures that we're going to see today. And yeah. so in my mind, I would try to reconstruct them, you know, and figure like, how did they make that? You know, and I am an artist as well. And if anybody knows me, you could see my work on Instagram. And I'm, I'm, I, I've been studying art for decades, for decades. And mm -hmm. I'm finally figuring it out, right? So what I've done is I've... I've uh, the, the, what we're going to go over today is a little more of a lesson in art history to give everyone a, an appreciation of how fascinating art history can be. I think that many people find it a little boring to think about art history. It's it's that's a crime because who's delivered that message to you might have been boring, right? And maybe it was delivered to you in a very <laughs> academic way, a dry way. But I, I can promise you, it's just all how you look at it. And I'm gonna take you through a journey um, and and talk about, I have a few slides to share with you okay. uh, to kind of set this up. And we're gonna land at a place where we're gonna actually reconstruct the artwork of the masters. Oh, okay. And this is this is a tradition that's been happening for, for millennia. So, so uh, can I switch over to my slides okay, and hold on we can that. get started? 
Hold on, yeah. Adam. Just a little bit. Okay, hold on okay. for a little bit. Okay, guys. Okay. So, um, Coach Adam uh, briefly mentioned that he's actually really an artist, guys. So, okay, visit his website, adamthinkup.com, so you could see his amazing work as well. Of course, he's on YouTube and on Facebook as Coach Adam on YouTube and on Facebook, adam.thinkup. Okay, so with that note, okay, let's go through a little bit of, you know, down history and memory lane, okay, as inspiration for our uh, episode for today. Go, Coach Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. So we talked about this idea of copying. And if you go to some of the large museums, big ones, I'm talking about like the Met or the Louvre, every once in a while, if you're lucky, you'll find a student sitting in front of uh, sitting in front of a master painting with an easel. And they actually have times where the period is open for artists to come in and it's open to the public so you might see this yourself it's uh, amazing you, you might walk in and you'll find oops what's going on here let me <laughs> shut this window there we go okay. you might find so someone like this wonderful lady you know copying the master and if i zoom out just a little bit you'll see how good of a copy that she made oh, and it's wow. a painting of a person painting a painting right how meta is that right but oh, it's really amazing yes. and this it, some people say well isn't that copying isn't it like copyright isn't there a problem there it's a good question but actually the practice the practice that i share the practice that i shared has been going on for millennia um, I was in Mexico in the city of Puebla. I saw this amazing exhibit that featured the work of Leonardo da Vinci. You, you've heard of Leonardo da Vinci before, mm -hmm. right? Everyone knows Leonardo, <laughs> right? There was only one small drawing by Leonardo. The entire exhibit were all his students for the most part, but you couldn't tell because Leonardo had hundreds of students and they would just copy his paintings, right? And so it's very hard sometimes to know whether or not it's the actual painting or the or, or the student of the master, right? And that's how they used to teach. You know, remember there was no there was no mass media, there was no television, there was no internet, there was there was there was no way to learn outside of doing it. So copying the masters is something that's been in play for millennia, for millennia as, as part of your apprenticeship. You would copy and copy and copy. So this is a, a an old an old tradition. And mm -hmm. one master that I, I'm always fascinated with is uh, a modern master by the name of Pablo Picasso. And a lot of people go, oh, yeah, I know Picasso. Most people, when you say Picasso, while sometimes his behavior was not thought of nicely, uh, and, recently but his work is well known and we need to divorce his personal habits from the work that he produced he was an incredibly prolific prolific painter and and had a huge impact in fact at the end of picasso's life and uh he was so famous that he would walk into a restaurant and the signature on the check was worth a hundred times what the bill was <laughs> <laughs> so all he had to do was sign the check <laughs> exactly. and it, the stitch and, and the receipt was worth a hundred times more than the meal, right? Because of his signature was that valuable. I mean, imagine, you know, paying for anything with your signature. That's uh, how incredibly popular he was. He had such an impact. Now, when it comes down to the work itself, well, I've never really been a big fan of Picasso's paintings. They're a little too intense for me. I like the old master stuff, the softer stuff, the prettier stuff. But uh, his story and his impact is fascinating to me. And I really love his drawings and especially his collages. Which, and he was very, very crafty, very crafty. And that's why I thought he would be a good fit. So, but we're going to go back. When we think about this, uh, Picasso, this is a typical painting. You know, you think about this abstraction and the cubism. Uh, you may think about something like this beautiful, you know, colorful, big lines, lots of abstraction, flat planes, interesting play of color. And, and sometimes they'll, the eyes will be offset, you know, very, very a little alarming in some ways, but also inviting and um, and interesting. But this is what people know Picasso for. We're going to go back in time when uh, Picasso was in his 30s, early 30s, just turning 30. Mm -hmm. 
he had moved from Barcelona, he's from Spain, he moved from Barcelona to, to Paris, and a lot was happening at the time in Paris. And one of the things that were, at was happening since about 1850, the middle, the middle of the of uh, the the nineteenth century, was the salon. The salon, and you know, it was a really big deal, where once a year they would have this huge exhibit of all the greatest artists and all of anybody who was anyone, including the royalty from all over Europe, would come to see this great exhibit. And if you had a good day at the salon as an artist, you were set for life. Basically, you had more you had more work than you knew what to do with, you know, and that's really was everyone was creating painting for the salon. And and you could see here they used every single inch of the wall in these halls to fill it. Well, let me tell you, there was more than just salon painters, which were very mm -hmm. academic. Now, I personally really love these kind of paintings, but they were very bourgeois or, you know, they were focused on the royalty or, you know, the wealthy, beautiful life, beautiful mm -hmm. imagery, right? And this was something that was somewhat new because you go 100 years before that and most of the art that you find was only either in the church or, is, say, in a king's palace, right? So just having art for art's sake, wasn't very common until the 19th century. So about mid 19th century, which is like the 1850s, it became a bit of a fascination. And this is like the scene because not only were they going to see the paintings, they were going to see each other. So what you wore, who you spoke to, it was the scene. But at the same time, uh, on the other side of the street, there were independent artists, right? So they were like using the spectacle to create their own salon. And this was the Salon of Autumn, which is autumn, right, of fall. And every year uh, they would have this kind of anti-art or independent uh, uh, salon, right? So uh, at the same time. But the media started to go to these events and they found it really interesting because it would shake up the thinking of the of the mainstream right and um picasso was going to these and his work was very pretty right very nice until he met this one gentleman by the name of Paul Cezanne. Cezanne. Mm. Now, Cezanne is a famous artist in himself, and I'm a mm. big fan, always have. They have a great collection in New York at the Met of Cezanne's work and really had a big influence on how I paint today. And uh, if you if you know my work, right? And this is a, a self-portrait of, of Mr. Cezanne, who is from the south of France. His father was a, a wealthy uh, a wine, a vintner. He made wines and had beautiful fields. And he was the son, so he had some extra money. So he started to paint. And when he went to France and he showed his work, uh, he was ridiculed for what he did. People couldn't understand him. But he had great influence over Picasso. And these, this is a picture of Cezanne's here. And if we look at this, this looks kind of pretty. But in the day, this was alarming to show something that was this fragmented, this abstract, this mm -hmm. non-representational, and even to suggest that there's figures in this. But if you look closely in the yeah. middle, it's bathers, right? But, mm -hmm. and it's just, to us, this just looks like a pretty abstract painting, right? Very pastoral. But then, because everything was so representational and neoclassical, you know, very realist, beautiful and lush, uh, and it didn't look like it was painted quickly. It looked like it was slowly painted over many years. This was alarming, right? And and there was a lot of press about Cezanne's painting, and Picasso at the time, right? Uh, this is what his work looked like. You know, it was very soft, very pretty. This is a boy with a pipe, right? And just beautiful, right? Just beautiful, uh, gorgeous. Or, But little by little, as the, as the years moved on, you can see that Picasso changed his style. It started to get more angular, like Cezanne, right? So here, this is a self-portrait, right? In about two, uh, two, uh, 18... No, no, 1910, maybe 1909, I think. Mm -hmm. I, maybe 19, I'm not sure of the date. Um, but uh, then uh, cu Cubism started. And this was the idea where they just kept on fracturing and fracturing the image. And Picasso and his counterpart, Brock, who was his friend, mm. Georges Brock, uh, the two of them shared a studio and they would just try to outdo each other. 
right? To get, and this is a this is actually a painting by Georges Braque of Picasso. But as you can see, little by little, we go from you know coming from here, coming from here to here to here, it gets even more and more fractured. And the Salon of of nineteen twelve, Picasso put this picture in. And it was a scandal. The media just said, you've gone too far. You've oh. just simply gone too far, right? But if you look closely, this is, uh, this is uh, a picture of a person. If you can look at the top, you can see a face on the left. And if you look uh, in the middle, there's a bit of a tie. And then there's a little bit of an instrument or maybe a table. And there's a little bit of a scene. Like if you look really closely, I'm going to zoom in here. You can see a little bit of a newspaper right in the, 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 the guitar. There might be a little suggestion of a glass or a tray or a table, maybe of another person, right? It's almost like this is a fractured scene of something that was going on at a cafe right or in a dark kind of well, situation face, right you yeah. can see yeah you can definitely see the face right and a little bit of that maybe a hat and as you can squint you start to see things but when we think about our, how our own minds think when we remember back a scene it's kind of fractured like this and also you'll notice that the colors are very Remember, this was around the time of World War I and then followed by World War II. These were very difficult times in Europe. And Picasso was from Spain, right? He wasn't, didn't have a lot of money. So a lot of the art at this time, he was using whatever he could find and paint was very expensive. So the brown tones, the earth tones were much less expensive and much more affordable. But as you can see here, it just constantly started break down and become more and more and more fractured right mm -hmm. and so um as i shared and this is this is where we're going to start but before i get there this is a very famous collage uh called uh, uh guitar and wine glass and mm. and um picasso picasso loved to do these collages because he didn't have a lot of money right and so he would use whatever he could find wrapping paper sheet music a bit of a bit of uh carton you know anything that he could find advertisements he would save everything and then like a crafter right like a scrapbooker he would put these together and then he would paint them like they would become paintings so he'd work out his ideas and paper first right and then he would construct them and what's amazing is what he used for for glue they didn't have you know crafters glue back then right they'd have they'd use like rabbit skin or crazy things the adhesive that he used was probably a, a flour paste just flour and water and we just mix or starch and water like cornstarch and water yeah. and he would make his own paste and just put it together so it's really hard for conservators because these beautiful collages uh they are falling they're decaying right because they're made with organic materials sometimes they'll find oh, yeah. like old old hidden uh work of his that are being eaten by insects even because you know the flower and stuff like that so we're going to get started with with this with this image and then we're going to move on to this image so we have these two images and in the pdf that i shared uh in the pdf that i shared uh you can you can go to the link uh I think uh, Lala, you you provided a link, yes, and yeah. Um, yeah. so you can you can download the PDF. My slides are there. You can look at those, or you can get. I, I outlined all the shapes. These are really straightforward, and both Lala and I have them uh, and have them kind of pre-cut. So we're going to go through reconstructing these Yay. two great masterworks as our sort of crafty yes. moment. So that, that I'm going to okay. First, uh, let's start. I'm going to switch bit. my camera. Okay, that, yeah, okay that, sure. Okay, because yeah. uh, thank you. First and foremost, Adam, thank you for, you know, letting us go through that bit of a history because now I actually understand, you know, oh, that is why Picasso does his, uh, you know, paintings or, uh, you know, artwork like that, okay? He wasn't a very wealthy artist to start with, so he made do with what, with what he, he had and eventually we all loved it, right? And Cubism, oh my goodness, uh, Coach Adam, I didn't know that. My best friend who used to be a crafter herself, um, she is in the, you know, uh, in the law. <laughs> She's a, 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 um, uh, an attorney, a higher kind of attorney. So, um, to relax she found art 
and uh, a few weeks ago, that's where I lost my road wireless go. I did an interview because she there was this very big, uh, you know, um, art event, and her painting was in one of those, and she uh, now loves cubism. So now I understand better, okay, where cubism actually, you know, got its uh, history. So guys, I hope that you found that also very nice and very enlightening. And again, as Coach Adam said, the link to the PDF downloadable and printable is in the description of this video. If you cannot print it right now, okay, just uh, that you know, so that you know it's there. If you want to recreate this later on, then go ahead. Okay, Coach Adam, let's go craft and uh, do art together. Okay. 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 Let me press pr some buttons here. Okay. There, we go. there you go. Okay. Awesome. So we're going to start with what, Coach Adam? Okay, so this is this is I'm going to pull this piece out here. So if you look in the lower corner, you can see here. Uh, this is uh, this is uh, the very famous collage, which is a guitar with a wine glass, mm -hmm. right? And if you download the PDF, I outlined it. So and also I created the wallpaper. I used actually Gen AI. I had just mm -hmm. the piece from the work, and then I had Gen AI recreate the rest, and okay. it did a really good job. So if you download the PDF, we have this as a full page too. But um, I'm going to put this down as as just the as the base, right? But I'm going to have my card here because we're going to match the card, and I'm going wow. to place all the pieces first, right? And okay. not, I'm not going to glue them. Uh, I'm going to place them down, and then I'll think about gluing them. And then what I've done is, you'd be really proud of me. I put all the pieces, I cut them out, and I put them, I put Yay. them in a bag. So I it's have them like separated. a like a true crafter, guys, right? So Coach Adam yeah. knows our, you know our yeah. uh, the things that we do we like well things in baggies now yeah well i you know i've been crafting you know as art you know disguised yeah. as art for four, four, 45 50 years so yeah it's uh, i've been doing it for a long time yeah. and i've got doubles too of everything so i've got all these pieces you know all the various pieces so um what i can do is talk you through the placement of the pieces let me just move some stuff around so you can kind of see it so and so when we look at the original right what we need to do is think about what's on the bottom right and can you guess can you guess lala which which piece do you think is the lower piece you start from the bottom to the top okay i think it is uh the blue the yes very blue. good very good so the blue is the anchor at the bottom right and so I, I cut out this blue piece and and you can see here i'll just roughly place it where it needs to be and i understand there might be a little bit of a cut off um you know because of the camera but um uh i would start by putting this down first and i'm just going to place mine um i'm not going to glue mine because mm -hmm. what i want to do is do this maybe do this again right okay. so i want to keep it like a kit and and it, it'll sit just fine so yeah, start with the blue, good. But notice notice where the blue is. Notice where the blue is on the pattern. Okay, oh, so you probably oh, wanna okay. go there. Right, oh. right, right. And the fatter side is on the bottom. Notice how it's kind of weighted towards the bottom, like a oh. guitar neck. Oh, right? see, so I make... have, the thing is I have my, it's upside down it's oh you have it upside <laughs> down yes yeah, so okay there you go. There you go. that's okay. why yeah. okay thank you coach that's why. Okay, and this has do to you have on the top yeah okay. a little yeah a little higher and again that's why i would place it down before you commit to gluing anything correct correct right? and and it's this, there's only a few pieces so it's not hard to do exactly. right so what what do you think would be the next piece and um, it's kind of a toss up i but. think it would have to be the one with the musical uh paper with the music the music yes. so yeah you could use any music scrap you have i actually found something um and and i reprinted it so there it is i cut it out so there's my little piece of music here and i'm gonna put it down kind of as kind of as accurately as i can to match there we go okay and there's and mine says gone where the southern and it says yellow dog four. I don't know what that is, but it doesn't quite match Picasso's music, but there's three lines of music here, which kind of matches. Okay. Right? So, so there's my partial Picasso, right? Mine too. <laughs> good, good. Wait, oh, that's new. Is that music? Yeah, that is music. It's hard for yes. me to see, but yeah, good, good, good. Leave yourself a little bit on the bottom. Yes. 
right? Yeah, there you go. Okay. So now the blue should kind of look like a C, like it's taking a bite out of the music. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, so where do we go next? What do you think? Okay, next would have to be either the circle, small white circle, mm -hmm. or the one with the, is that a, a cup? The curve, the curvy part. Yeah, so this is actually the, oh yeah, oh, no, I would I would okay. save that for last. Okay, okay, um, got it. I think probably better off we do the wood grain. This okay, is wood, wood grain. Okay. Yeah, so what I did is I printed out some wood, wood grain, and then I cut it out, so... And then you can look across to see where that meets up with the music. So it's like kind of just above the second line and kind of inching along. And I'm just going to okay. place mine in there just like that. You see that? All right. See that? Okay. And Coach is saying hi to Anna in the chat. Hi, Anna. Oh. Hi, Anna. Oh, hi, Anna. How are you? We're making some Picassos today. Yes. Beautiful. Like okay this. okay oh it's looking good it's looking good okay so next we could we could certainly do the the um this the circle and i'm just i'm I, I have a circle um i have a circle here but what i'm gonna do is just i'm gonna cut a circle out just to say, say that like well, okay. my pieces are somewhat accurate. It's okay if you do it on your own. You just cut a circle however you want to. Like it's just mm. can be inspired by the master. It doesn't have to be okay. as accurate as we're aiming for. But I just wanted to show you that, you know, it doesn't have to be that that much of a match. But if you just carefully cut and I'll just go through here my and cut the circle out. It's not working, I think. <laughs> it's okay. There we go. And now I'm just gonna I'm gonna drop the circle down and and put this in. And sometimes for positioning, you just look at the negative space. So this is almost this blue area should be around square. Like so, if you look oh. at the negative space around it, it helps you with the positioning. You have oh. now you have more pieces to anchor on. Okay. See, it's nice like putting it together, nice. right? So there's actually nice. a rhyme or reason for. Okay, so we only have three more pieces to go, right? And one of them is uh, the newspaper in the corner that says Les Joux. And then the next one is the wine glass. Okay, and uh, I, I think this is going to be fun for me because uh, we're going to do the wine glass. And um, I'm actually going to draw the wine glass. I don't, I don't actually have it. So, oh, wow. Um, okay why so don't let's, let's go full that. screen give yes, me a second and let me change my camera and i'm gonna draw i'm gonna draw the wine glass oh, okay. and then uh so it's it's more original let me i'm gonna switch my camera right now so i'm full screen on the overhead there we go okay there, you there go. we go okay and what i'm going to do is actually just just copy so it's just this little drawing here so there's this little little drawing in here by picasso which is really lovely right really lovely that he did this right and uh I'll, I'll grab my pencil here and just we'll can just we'll just eye it out so um this is going to be here i'm just going to make some some rough marks here just to give myself some some placers like so this is this is where that midpoint is of the cup and then there's this curve here there's a line here i'm just putting some light marks here just so i don't run out of space and then there's this piece here which is this rectangle what I love about this so much is as you deconstruct and recreate the work of these masters, you can start to think, wow, this is what they were thinking when they were making these things, right? And like redrawing the work of a master gives you an opportunity to see through their eyes and maybe like wear their shoes in a way, you know, I don't know if that's a good idea, but you know, you know what I'm trying to say, just to just think through the mind of a master. And, and it's so easy. It's not that it's easy to do, but it's available to you. Right. It's like almost, you know, you think of people play music, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll learn a song by a master and you'll make it sound like them, like a cover. Right. So it's a way to kind of think through the mind of your heroes. 
Um, and it's so reward. It's so rewarding. It's You're so right, rewarding. Adam. Right. So we actually do covers of songs, right? So why not do something similar with with art, right? So art, yeah, a craft. Yeah, that's and how it's, we learn. it's it's it's. It's how we honor them, right? And how we learn from them, right? And we're not going to sell this. We're not yes. doing this. And we're, we're not going to claim it's ours, right? No, 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 not at all. It, in fact, it's, it's more like a love letter, you know, just like, hey, this is, I want to, I, I, I love this so much that I'm going to re try to recreate it and give it honor and respect and learn from it, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, you know, it's and it'll make you a better a better artist. And in fact, even it'll make you a better a person who appreciates the art. You know, so when you go to the museum and you see this piece one day, you'll be like, "Oh yeah, I made that piece too. I know exactly how it feels." To exactly. Make this. And Adam, when you go to art school, right? So um, mm -hmm. this is an uh, this is an a technique that actually um, art students actually go through, right? Oh, absolutely. As I shared, it's an ancient, you know, ancient as it's been happening for millennia, but it also happens to this day. I was at the Milan Art Institute last year and mm -hmm. we were studying master painting. You know, this is quite common to, to just take a look and do sketches based on what the masters did. It's a very easy way to learn. Uh, you don't need a, even an instructor. You just need to do the work and copy copy the work and just you know understand it's just a copy you're not suggesting it's your work but by copying the masters you will learn so much mm -hmm. so much so quickly so it's because like walking you know, in their shoes right so okay. that's what i said yeah mm -hmm. absolutely and then you'll say wow i didn't even realize uh, that looks so simple but it's not there's all kinds of hidden all kinds of hidden things that like your mind decided it was simple but then when you try to reconstruct it you're like wow that was not simple at all right and so like just you know me kind of redrawing this little by little i'm realizing well what did i what did i get myself into here this is this is a lot more complex of a little abstract drawing than i, than I think and i'm talking as well like we're doing a live yeah. stream so like you know i'm under i'm under the I'm under the pressure to perform, which is something I do not like to do. Like if you know me and I create YouTube videos, I very rarely talk about art or making art. I don't show off my art. When I'm making art, I don't want to be, I don't want to be bothered uh, with making a video. When I'm making a video, I want to be making the video, right? So uh, it's, it's kind of weird that way for me, right? Yes, but, but I uh, know. So I thank it, you, Adam, because I know you're doing this so that we can understand better right the, the topic for today which is how we can actually uh, it, get inspired by recreating the actual work of uh, the master right one of the masters in this case picasso right that's right that's right that's that's absolutely correct so now what i'm going to do is now that i put the sketch in just so it's a little uh easier to see on the camera, I'm actually uh -huh. going to use some marker, and um, Picasso never really used marker at this stage of the game. But uh, he did use <laughs> marker later in his career. But uh, I'm going to use okay. marker just so you can see it a little better. Yeah, so it'll it's, show. it's for our benefit, guys, so that we can see yeah. it better. Right, and it's just, it's just, I'm just putting in some you know light lines here, and it's not perfect, but it doesn't, nor does it need to be, right? Nor does it need to be, mm -hmm. right? So. And that's one of the nice things about art too, unlike graphic design, which is something I also, you know, professionally I do. And, you know, as, as a creative director, um, we're always thinking about things being exact. And uh, the nice thing here is with art, for art's sake, it can kind of be how you want it to be. Craft is sometimes like that too. There's like baking, you know, like a baking has to be so exact. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to like, you know, uh, just like doing a stir fry or just cutting a salad, right? It's just, you know, it's like whatever you have in the fridge or, you know, this kind of a, an or you have artistic license to, to kind of do whatever you want to do. So I, I'm right? actually so. um, recreating that, but I'm doing, <laughs> because what I'm doing is I actually printed that one. And then oh I, yeah, and I did a little sketch for you, right? Yes, so but the there, only thing yeah. I do now is just put in those uh, 
what do you call those pencil markings or shading? Uh, cross hatching. Yeah, yes, shading cross or cross hatching. Hatching. Yes, hatching. Yes, hatching. hatching. It's not really cross, it's just hatching. Yeah, yeah hatch, hatch that, work. Yes, putting yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something on the sides here and there to add more, more details. Not really coloring it in full, right? So, so there you go. So watch Coach Adam as he, you know, makes this look very easy because in fairness, it is really easy uh, at this point, right? Again, we're not yeah. after perfection at this point. We're just trying to, you know, dip our, uh, dip our hands into, okay, so how is this artwork, you know, um, recre uh, created? Okay, so more or less, you know, the feels for it. Yeah, the feeling for it. Exactly. And appreciation, right? The appreciation of it. We're just, we're playing, we're playing with the art. We're playing with the art. We're, we're like speaking to it in a way and in a very uh, intimate way. So now the next time you see a Picasso painting, you'll be like, wow, I know a lot about Picasso. In fact, now that I created one of his works, <laughs> right? That's the way you'll feel like, you know, in fact, what you're doing is far more than most people will ever do in their lifetime in understanding, uh, in understanding what it is that he was doing at that time right and you can see little by little as you reconstruct this this drawing of his you can start to see the wine glass right in all its angles and and what he was what he was going for which is you know really fascinating and you can start to actually make some improvements might i say <laughs> to the master's work if you want to you know or or your own spin on it right uh -huh. like at this point there's no rules, right? This is, I think, and I think I'm about, I'm about ready to, this is, this is good enough, I think, because we're just going to put this in place. So I'm going to, well, I'm going to go back. Definitely good. <laughs> right. So there, you, there you go. That look kind of looks like, you know, a Pablo, Pablo-esque. And I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to drop it in. So I'm going to drop okay. this one in place. So, okay, and this so one. Let's... Okay. Goes right in. I'm going to go back to the two up in a second. Let me just, I'm going to drop this in and then I'll switch. Now I don't, yeah, this goes in right here, just like that. All right. So we're starting to see, you're starting to see the, starting to see the similarity, right? You see, there's the, the little drawing there. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the two up. So I'm going to switch my screen right now. Okay. So if you want to go, go, if you want, there, you go. there we go. Oh, Good. Okay. And so next, uh, we'll go to. Um, I'm going to put down the corner, right? So the corner is a little newspaper, uh, oh. is the little newspaper, right? And so this, this just is really easy. Just tuck it in there. Uh, you can't see it on mine. I'm going to move my artwork so you can see it on okay. the bottom, right? But it's just this little piece of this little newspaper on the bottom. Right, so you see that? Yeah, yes. there you go. Okay, hold on. Again, I can I can coach Adam. I don't know if you can zoom out on my camera at all. Okay, there so we I go. Yeah, out. okay. Yeah, you get also zoomed out a bit, but uh, there you go. Is that better, coach? Uh, you can zoom in a little bit. Zoom in a little bit. Okay. Yeah, because yeah. you get lots of blue. There you go. There you go. But you can see uh let me just bring the end. oh just a little bit of light there we go and then there's one piece after that okay and the one piece yes. after that is so the is newspaper. the little black the, oh. the bottom of the guitar oh, yes so the, the newspaper goes in first before... yeah because it captured okay there you go there we go Here. okay so there you go there okay you go. There so we have this is the original and this is the copy All right so okay there you go okay and then put in the black okay nice oh i love what you're doing i absolutely love what you're doing yeah and then you can yeah oh and i love your glass really good really good <laughs> so actually uh, if you when you download that it's just the copy of the glass and then I just use this uh, Stabilo uh, All Mark to just do all those, uh, as uh, Coach said, just hatchings, right? So for for it, and then now I put in the last piece, 
okay which is okay a little bit like it's touching that one see i would have just placed this like so anywhere and then because i saw how coach adam was doing it so it's like you look at where you know the different perspectives where it should actually yep. be use the guide. other use the other objects as your guide right yeah, to figure so, out where okay, everything goes so i never realized that right so there you go yeah. That's pretty close. Yeah, that, I would, I would, I would, if I walked in and somebody said, oh, this is from one of Picasso's other pieces, I would say, wow, I didn't know. <laughs> oh, I know think my he circle, though, is so, too is... much to the left, right? Anyway. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's your take on it. Yeah, absolutely. Good job. So do you want to move to the next project? Okay, let's do it. Okay, so the next How about is... comments? You want to take a break for comments? Okay, sure, sure, sure. Okay, so let's go look at the comments. And of course, Anna was here earlier on. Of course, we have to, uh, Cordelia had to say bye bye. Okay, because it's actually bedtime for her. Thank you so much for dropping by, my friend. And Anna said, Oh, wow, you are all so talented. You too, Anna, actually. She is actually very crafty herself. Okay, so if you have not checked out, Anna is Fate52 on YouTube and she has an amazing podcast. Okay, Crafty Visage Dawn said, Adam, that I think we do that as paper crafters by casing others and using their inspiration. So yes, or sometimes awesome. we call it sometimes scrap lifting. Scrap lifting. Yes. That's awesome. I love that. I'm going to use yes. that. I'm going to yes. use that. So it's that's like awesome. art lifting, <laughs> scrap lifting. Art lifting, right? yeah. So there Excellent. you go. And um, Cordelia said, okay, I really have to go. I'm going to watch the replay. Yes, yes. Okay, good night. Good night, Cordelia. Nighty night from uh, Dawn. And, uh, okay, uh, Miss Shikara Cartagena, Mega Mega. MMLSO is a Filipino, you know, uh, acronym, which means Mega Mega Love Shout Out. That's a Filipino way. We love expletives, right? So, oh, I love okay. it. Thank mega you. Mega Love Shout Out to everybody. There you go. Thank you so much for, for dropping by. Okay, so we're moving on to our next project. So the next project is from... Who is the master that we're um, copying? Same. Now? So this is this is same. This is so we're sticking with Picasso, um, Picasso. and this is another piece. that's a little more, it was a little more quiet, uh, not okay. as chaotic, right? And okay. it's just the guitar, right? And actually, in this case, this is a violin. So this okay. was his violin. Um, and this is called Violin Fall, uh, from two from eight. Uh, 1912 1912 is when this was made and so this is a much easier one to make i think and with this one this this if you get the pdf um because these these pictures are in public domain there's a copy of this you can print it out for yourself if you want to yeah, take a look at so it I, I did, right I, then, I printed only the what do you call this the for the templates <laughs> oh good yeah you yeah, cut them so. out yeah great that's what I did the same thing. And again, uh, my 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 templates are very basic. I, I'm not a crafter, so I apologize if oh. if it doesn't make sense. But uh, hopefully, they'll, 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 they were okay. They are awesome, um, Coach. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So this one's going to be pretty fun and fast because there's not a lot here. I mean, it's amazing what Picasso could do with so few shapes. But some of the shapes are really tricky, and they were hard for me uh, to even create uh on my own so um again so looking at the source so this is the source here right looking at the source okay what do you think what do you think we should start with um this one the middle part the yeah in fact i would i thought that too in the beginning but oh, because no. everything hangs off of the top on this one right oh, i so actually built start... this one from the top down oh, okay, and okay. then i but don't glue it and then i sl, just to get the positioning okay. then i slipped the square the one that you picked up first uh but ah, so this so was this, this was the hardest piece for me to cut out i cut the first one out and i just didn't i didn't like it this is the top of the this is okay. the top of the um of, of the violin so i cut okay. another one out and i like this one better so i'm going to start with this one so i'm going to oh, put this on the top Okay. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm going to do is put the bl the black neck. So this is the neck of the violin underneath okay. and wa watching to make sure that I have a little bit of the overlap. Right. So this starts to get, yeah, there you go. And okay, this, okay, okay. 
starts to give me a framework to build the rest. And then we have the rectangle piece, right? And the rectangle piece, I'm just gonna slide underneath, right? I'm gonna slide underneath and it's a little bit short and it goes about halfway up, right? Kind of like this, right? Okay. There we go, kind of like, like this. Let's see here, right? Okay. And now make sure you, you know, you, you're in the right spot uh, I'm a little low on the page. I'm going to actually move all this stuff up. But once you like the positioning, then I would start to glue those down, right? And I'm going to I want to keep this kit, so I'm just going to do a placement here. I'm not yep. going to actually glue mine. Okay. So what so. could this castle be thinking? You know, when he was creating this one, does he probably have a guitar as an inspiration for this you know yeah you so know he wasn't a musician <laughs> so no but his friends were right so uh -huh. um what he was trying to do was work out remember the, this is how he would work out his paintings and uh -huh. the music motif was very popular he's trying to sell these right and oh, music okay. motif was very popular so you know but but he wanted to deconstruct them Right. And also music at the time, too, is getting atonal and angular and choppy, like it, even classical music. As you move towards the the early 1900s, you'll hear it like mm -hmm. Stradivinsky, like da, 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 da. like it, mm -hmm. oh, it, it reflects the artwork, what was happening at the time. OK, so um, the next one I put down when I was constructing this in my mind would be the base, which is that light beautiful light blue box I couldn't right? find the so exact I'm, color though so close no no it. either yeah. My, yeah you would probably you probably have to paint that that's just yeah. a piece of cardboard that was painted a piece of carton that was painted now unfortunately because mine is not gluing it's moving a little bit as i shift but i'm gonna move this underneath and reposition all this stuff the nice thing about the right. template that you gave coach adam is it's exactly the same you know i mean the, the size is uh so you can use that as your template really too if you want to use your own paper yes and not have yeah. it printed like what i did i just printed the the actual thing in uh you know just an outline and then i use this as a template to cut whatever paper i have that's exactly what i did i cut out the shapes yes. and then i trace them i exactly. trace the shapes so if you on the have, on the paper you know, if you don't want to print everything because you know this color it's gonna take up too much you know probably ink so you can you can do so like that okay. you can and you can put the picture on your computer instead exactly okay. for inspiration okay. Yeah. Yep. And then um, we have, uh, then what I did was I would, I would put the blue piece down, the other blue piece, which is slightly darker. I already have it cut out, but I have one here that's not cut out. I, I did doubles just in case, it's just to show you. So it would just, you know, cut a rectangle and then cut out the half circle. So I'm going to do that. And you cre recreated it into a, into a card. That is so nice. <laughs> Did you see that in our countdown? Coach was, you know, holding it up. Oh yeah, as a as a little card. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. I had these all printed out. I have a whole box. What I do is when I find a really beautiful painting, uh -huh. I tend to I get the highest resolution version of it and I print it out on my printer. And then I have a whole box filled of my own favorite paintings. It's almost like my own personal museum. And I'll take them up and I'll set them up on little easels and I'll be like, I'm in my favorite museum. It's like I'm surrounded by all my most favorite favorite paintings. I know that sounds so geeky, but it's See one of those how things. Ugly my fussy cutting is. I I cut this by hand, but <laughs> I almost destroyed the letter F. It's hard, right? It's hard when they are very tiny or you know. So. Ah, so what I was gonna do for the letter F uh -huh. was so, actually use acrylic marker. Oh, so instead, because it's so hard to actually fussy cut. It. Yeah, it's I wasn't gonna be able hard. to cut that, so I'll just. I'm just going to draw that one in. Yeah, okay, I'm going to just add so that. So there you go. Little... So especially for those who like doing calligraphy or, you know, drawing, that is actually genius. Because <laughs> it's hard to fussy cut, guys, this this, yeah. uh, this letter F. You, you can <laughs> if, if you want to. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, <laughs> That's good enough. It's, a, it's, it's not... 
I have a more opaque marker. I'm going to go in and go back. And now that I've got this one in, mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to, I have a better marker. I'm going to go in oh, there. Oh, my and white just thing is missing. Where is it? The white, the white rectangle that goes in the middle. Okay, I have to cut another one. Okay, I'll just have to cut my own one. There we go. There we go. And that's a little brighter. Put this one in. Okay. Oh, I've got two of the little white pieces. If I I'll, if I get on a plane now, I'll be there in what twenty seven hours to give you this one of these. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, but I do have the template, so I will cut that oh, okay. white paper. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, I don't think it's going to be too hard. You mean he flew all the way? Yes, he did. Just to give me the rectangular. He had a thing. he had a case for it too. It's a good thing, Adam, that it's the rectangular one that I lost, not the letter F, right? Because if it would have been the oh, I could actually just draw it. You could have just it. yeah, you could just draw it. Yeah, you could just draw it. So. Knowing you, I know you would have done a great job. Oh, thank you. I would have done it, but I don't know about the great job. <laughs> oh, come on. come on. I would have definitely done it. Because, you know, I'm always up for challenge anyway. So there. Okay, so where it goes. Okay, so this one I'm learning now from Coach Adam when you look at it. So it has to be a little bit in. Okay, and maybe near the F. So it's like looking at a grid, invisible grid of some sort, right? Yep. So, there you go. Yes. So there you go. Awesome. Okay. And that is there my you. copy. My, there you go. There you go. And probably we'll have to create, you know, a project in now inspired by this right so after copying and trying to recreate the master's work now you can probably we can probably now have been inspired by this work adam right so we can somehow start creating okay our own so this is our two projects for today guys how do you like it yeah really amazing and now also you know if you're out of ideas mm -hmm. you know look at some of the abstract work you know from these artists and you know it wasn't just picasso was doing collages there were a lot of collage artists in uh, the early uh, 1900s that were doing work that's very uh simple and mm -hmm. you should be able to replicate so it and it's okay to do so artists adam they're called collage artists, more or less. Well, they they were, you're going to love the name of this. The movement was called constructivism, like construction paper, oh, constructivism, oh. where they'd break down art into its smallest pieces. And in Russia, around 1905 to 1915, there was okay. the constructive period. They would only use red, black, and white, and they would use simple shapes, and they would arrange them on, on the page, and they were beautiful. They're amazing. Okay. Graphic designers love to look at these because they're like they're basically layouts for those things you've seen in modern magazines and mm -hmm. poster design, right? You look at the work that the Russian constructivists were doing, and there was a great influence uh, also in Paris from the Russians. The Russians were showing yeah, up in Paris. You will look at it, Adam, really. Um, it's actually very, very, you know, although it's made of different, but, you know, looking, but somehow there's a texture in the image and so but it's it's really kind of clean, right? So everything has a place. In its it's balanced, yeah. It's, it's balanced. balanced. It's sophisticated. The color, mm -hmm. the color values, and the balancing is is mm -hmm. really a sophisticated relationship. You know, this is high art. What, what we're looking at here is actually high art worth millions. <laughs> we're making it. You know, we're making oh. counterfeit, right? Yeah. But it's so it's Again, so fascinating. For, yes, for study right. purposes, right? So being able to yeah, it's just like for study. be in their shoes, how they like, oh, right? But probably for us, it's so easy because we're just copying them. But for them to actually come up with something like, how do you create something, right? And with they use what you... 
flour paste, you know, and they were using whatever they had lying around, you know, and they would cut it into pieces to create these exquisite works of art. And then what they would do, they would do this as the mock up or the maquette, you know, the setup, and then oh, they'd pick the one they would like, and the then book. then they would make the painting of it, you know, My which was the big had piece. Something missing. Sorry. Oh, the yeah, the. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I saw. I said, like, "Why do I have this?" And then I realized, "Ooh, there's yeah, you're missing, missing the guitar, the other part okay, of the, the violin." Oh, guys, sorry about yeah. that. Okay, sorry, Picasso. Okay, <laughs> I forgot the part of the guitar. Pablo, oh, yeah, okay. Pablo would be. Uh, I think you're missing something. Okay, there you go. There you go. He was. Oh, crazy. so much better. Oh my God, oh, that oh, pulls wrong, it all wrong, together. Wrong, 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 wrong. Okay, it has to be a little. It's not directly like to that side. It's a little bit off. It's not really connected. There you go. There it is. <laughs> oh, beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> okay. You probably have, if you're very OC, very, you know, observant, said, there's something wrong. There's something missing there. <laughs> All, right. All right. So again, guys, okay, Coach Adam, let's do our face cam. Yeah, let me let me just switch. Let me just okay. click so on guys, some buttons. Please don't forget yeah, to connect with Coach Adam on YouTube. He is Coach Adam, and on Facebook, it's Adam Tinkoff. And of course, if you want to see some of his amazing artworks, because he doesn't want to show off, okay. But I will, okay, invite you over to his Instagram and of course his website, where you can actually see just some of his amazing artworks okay and he can actually if you've seen him work there were challenges are they still online coach the challenges that you created before like everyday drawing stuff like that um, are still um they're in my instagram yeah they so if you go to adam tinkoff on instagram you can okay. look at all of the the yeah, uh, portrait challenges and the printing yeah. challenges and i also did shirt timber where i designed a shirt every shirt. every day and the uh, done where Correct. you do an ink drawing every day okay. i don't I, I don't do them every year those kind of challenges but uh i do find that art challenges like stan who's one of my friends he's yeah. very good at doing the challenges they are great for artists uh there is yes. the truth in qual quantity leads to quality but uh sometimes they're a grind too and I, I, I am a professional artist in the sense mm -hmm. of, well, I'm not selling, I am selling my artwork, but that's mm -hmm. not my profession. Mm -hmm. I work in, for a big company and I'm the yes. crea one of the creative directors. Yes. So I have teams of designers looking at the big vision of exactly. how we communicate as an but organization. Despite and all of this thing, clients. you never let go of your Yeah, but the having these fundamentals helps yeah. you with making those big decisions because, you know, even what we were doing today by reconstructing, mm -hmm. you know, some Something as simple as this, right? Mm -hmm. As this card here, that can you know just the relationship between those shapes is a beautiful way of laying out a poster or a flag or the side of a building or architecture, mm -hmm. right? These are all based on classic uh, ratios and visual relationships and understanding mm -hmm. those and the color, the color values and the balance here. Exactly. So beautiful, so subtle. It doesn't look like much, but when you start to play with it, you're like, whoa, he really is a genius. Yeah, so wow, your, that is, this is mind, so beautiful. Right, so our mind, when yeah. we look at it, it's like, if you look at it individually, somehow it doesn't make sense, right? But when you look at the whole picture after, so what Adam was saying about balance and the color, that's, you know, it's amazing. And sometimes you don't realize why we like it. Now we know. So it's, it's also nice to actually go through the history of it all so that we understand better. And that's one thing that you would love about, you know, Adam uh, in his um, channel also. He doesn't just show you, he explains to you. Like there's always like the behind the scenes. So the behind story, the back story before he actually goes into the topic for today. And that is very helpful, especially if the topic is Probably not something that you resonate with. Adam, tell us about, you know, uh, Mindset Mondays before we actually leave. Yeah, so I have, uh, I've, I've kind of pivoted my channel right now. Um, I was focusing on art last year on my channel, but I didn't do very much production on my channel because I was focusing on actually creating art. I painted close to 50 paintings last year, 50, five, zero, and wow. they're all in my studio. And you've see, probably seen them, my posts on Instagram, you can go and take a look at my work. And it, it was a huge effort. And I'm really glad to be moving away. Now, I'm, I'm still going to paint, but maybe my goal is to do like 12 paintings. 
Awards next year, one a month, and I'd be happy just to keep it to keep it going. But I'm leaning back into creating content, and I'm really focusing more on mindset and journaling. Journaling is journaling. at the core of what I talk about when I talk about mindset. To change your mind, you need to change your words and your language, and the best way to do that is through just writing them down. You know, writing down. What's in your What's in your head? You know, and it doesn't have to perfect, be fancy. Perfect. Time and to and start. I'm not talking about you know like pretty journaling. I'm talking yeah. about like really, really getting to the to notes. the to the yeah putting it down. And you know, I've been I've been writing like this three or four pages every day for 45 years. Wow. And so awesome. I know a little bit about journaling too, and how mm -hmm. it's one of the best ways to work through some of your anxieties, your challenges, your problems before they become bigger problems. Uh, you can. And you can say anything you want to your journal. Your journal will never speak back to you. And in fact, it's also a great place for prayer, right? If you uh -huh. want to get uh, in touch with whoever you believe in, whatever you believe in, this is a great way to articulate that in your mind. So then that message can go to your higher power, whatever that might be. Yes. And so it's a beautiful, beautiful thing that That's I don't think Mondays? enough people do. What time every Monday, Adam? 6 p.m., Pacific. That's California time. I'm in so San Diego. About, yeah. So that's about 10 a.m. Philippine time for us, right? It's so, kind of the same as this show, right? Was yes, on and yes. started so at six. So please don't yeah. forget to um to make sure that you don't miss it. All you need to do is follow or set notify. Of course, subscribe on uh, Coach Adams' uh, channel because he actually does uh, we stream to both at the same time every Mondays. Okay, right so on Facebook and YouTube. Yeah. And, and you can just look for Adam Tinkoff and it's Coach Adam. Yes. Or you can look Adam Tinkoff, you'll find me. There's yes. a couple of Coach Adams. So just look up Adam Tinkoff, you'll find me on YouTube. And uh, this Monday is New Year's Day. So uh, uh, I did not go live last this last Monday because it was Christmas, Christmas Day. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it was fine, right? So, but but New Year's Day I will, and we'll be talking about goal setting, setting up the new yes, year. Yes, because which that's really, so perfect, really right? Because at the beginning yeah. of the year, right, everybody we all want to start the new year on a you know good footing or a new start, great start. So, um, what a better way to actually do it. Uh, than to start setting goals, right? And start journaling. So this is a perfect for, for the coming new year, guys. So again, last awesome. comment before we leave. Adam makes amazing art. Indeed, Roy. And I love the chickens and the rabbits the most. He is talking about some of the artworks that Coach Adam did in the past challenges that he had for himself. And uh, go ahead and follow him on Instagram so you can see all of those things, right? So for his paintings, his drawings, the challenges are in his um, Instagram account. Again, Coach And Adam, I'd be happy to come back and do a show about my art. But today was something different. I wanted to yes. focus on art history exactly. and doing a little like fun, crafty stuff. And I and actually learned so many things. So my takeaway, Adam, is that when you are trying to learn the basics, focus on the tiny, minute details. Because most of the time, um, I don't do that. And so I realized that, oh, you know, it has to be between this and that. And I learned that from the guidance of uh, Coach Adam, that uh, what he did today with us by using actually the works of, you know, somehow deconstructing the works of the masters. All right. And we have Wit. Okay, coming in before we leave. Hi, Wit. Adam is plain amazing. Absolutely. I have to agree. All right. So, guys, thank you so much thank for you, joining Wit. us for Vlogmas Day 29. Thank you, everybody. Tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow is going to be a faith journaling. We're going to create gratitude cards. Okay, with uh, Miss Jo of Papel at Iba pa. With that, thank you so much, Adam, again. And Happy New Year to you and your family. And Happy New Year to you, uh, guys. Also, big hugs. Bye. Yes, thank you so, so much again for joining me and Coach Adam today. And I hope that you have actually been inspired by the Masters as was shown to us by Coach Adam. See you tomorrow for another Vlogmas Day here at Mommy Guiding. Bye.